You're listening to the Voice of Russia in London, where we're discussing fox hunting. Horse riders brandishing horns, dressed in traditional finery and accompanied by baying hounds and thousands of supporters. That was the scene across much of England last month as many of the 320 registered hunts took part in the traditional Boxing Day meet. A magnificent countryside sight or a symbol of unjustifiable cruelty to animals, depending on your point of view. A ban on hunting wild animals with dogs came into force in 2005, but animal rights campaigners say there is little enforcement and the law is routinely flouted. Prime Minister David Cameron is a Hunt member and says he is committed to repealing the ban, but a poll last month found more than three-quarters of respondents supported the ban and MPs decided not to vote on ending it in the House of Commons because they thought they would lose. With the public mood apparently so clear, will hunting with hounds ever become legal again or is it simply no longer socially acceptable to kill animals for sport? With me in the studio to discuss this are Sean Lovett, a pro-hunt dressage rider and journalist, Jim Barrington, who is a welfare consultant to the Countryside Alliance and a former executive director of the League Against Cruel Sports, and Vanessa Hudson, who is leader of the political party Animals Count. And on the phone we have Sir Gerald Kaufman, a Labour MP and an opponent of fox hunting. So, what's the future for fox hunting? Uh, Sean Lovett, let's start with you. OK. Uh, I think it needs to continue. The, the ban is absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's been around hundreds of years. It's, it's always seen in, in the countryside. Uh, banning it is just absolutely ridiculous. Vanessa Hudson. The future for, for fox hunting is it will remain illegal. It's not going to be overturned and, and the state we're in now will continue. OK, the state we're in now is not perfect, but I don't see in any way, shape or form this ban being repealed. Jim Barrington. The Hunting Act is a ridiculous piece of legislation. Most people haven't read it, but they just think it does some good. The fact that so many decent people oppose it, and the fact that it's the hounds that hunt, not the humans, means that it's got to go, but it should be replaced by a genuine animal welfare law, which will settle this issue. And uh, Sir Gerald. The issue is settled. We passed an act in Parliament, as you say, and that's that. The government, despite the credentials of the Prime Minister and despite faltering efforts to think about repealing it, have realised that there is not a majority in the House of Commons to repeal it, and that's that. OK, so Jim Barrington, uh, your position is quite interesting because you were uh, against fox hunting and now you've uh, changed your target. Describe how that came about and, and what your position now is. Well, I like being just a member of the public who, you know, quite understandably doesn't like to see animals killed. Um, being director of the league, I had to understand the issue a lot more. So I went out to see all forms of hunting. But just as importantly, I went out to see what the alternatives would be. Because unlike the baiting activities and the fighting activities, which sometimes people um, lump these two together, hunting is not baiting. It is, it is a, the use of scenting hounds to selectively and importantly non-wound the quarry in a management process. Um, and uh, if you remove that, something will fill its place. Now, I don't think that what has filled the place from the hunts that have had to restrict their activities, and hunting's not entirely banned, by the way, um, uh, that it's any good for animal welfare. So, quite simply, the Hunting Act has not saved the life of one animal, and it needs to be replaced by a sensible law that has principle at its core. What, why hasn't it uh, reduced animal cruelty? Because other things will move in to take its place. As I said, hunting is selective through scenting. It, it, it operates very much like wolves or other canines hunt in the wild, taking out the old, the weak and the sick. And it's non-wounding. It, there is no case of, of being able to wound the animal. It either uh, gets away or it, or it gets caught. No other method of control will be able to make that claim. And therefore, simply banning something, which, as I said, is actually the dogs that hunt. It's not the people, it's the dogs that hunt. And as smart as hounds are, they haven't learned to read yet. Yes, well, uh, that's a fair point, isn't it, Vanessa? No, I think there's some confusion here. The Hunting Act of 2004 
it was never set out to save the lives of animals. It was set out to prevent people from hunting foxes with dogs and make that illegal. And that's largely what's happened. It, it, it didn't set out to save the lives of foxes. And so it's unsurprising to me that, that, that we're even discussing this now. That's not the issue. It's a red herring. But uh, Jim Barrington is saying that it hasn't reduced cruelty to animals. Well, it's that's a separate... increased cruelty. It has, not, it, it has not decreased cruelty. That's increased. a separate issue, and it doesn't mean that we go back to fox hunting with dogs because we have a problem with something that's happening now. That's a nonsense argument. But surely, if your organisation is against cruelty to animals, uh, it's something that you would consider, isn't it? If, if, if this ban hasn't had any real material impact on the amount of cruelty to animals, it doesn't really matter whether it exists or doesn't exist. Well, it does matter that it exists. I think that's what we're debating now, is whether or not the issue of repeal is likely to happen or not. But the fact that I think there isn't a single person engaged in this debate who would say that the current state of affairs is perfect. We all recognise that there are issues with the way foxes are killed these days. But there is no grounds for saying, OK, this is terrible, let's go back to the, the, the days when we had hunting with dogs. That was a great solution. No one on earth would claim that. So what would you like to see happen now? Well, I, th I think... It's right that we're not in this uh, this year, in 2013, going to have a free vote on the question. I think that's perfectly correct. And I think we carry on debating what we do about managing and controlling fox populations. And I think the first place we need to start is to have a really honest conversation about whether or not we actually do need to control fox populations. Because as far as I know, I don't see any evidence that fox, con fox populations are actually causing a problem. Sean Lovett, uh, you may have a view on this. Can I just ask, do you live in the countryside and do you see the fox population well, and, I, I and do. what's I, happening? I divide my time between the countryside and the city, so I'm, I'm lucky in that I enjoy both perspectives. I come from a similar background to you, Sean, in that I grew up horse riding. Lots of my friends are horse riders, take part in hunting, and my own chickens have been killed at the hands of foxes. So I see the damage that they do, but that's never led me once to think that the solution to that is to go and hunt them on horseback with dogs. It's just nonsensical. So what about the, the farmer's livelihood that is absolutely ruined because these foxes are, you know, taking away what earns their money and, and killing what earns their money, their, their stock? It, it needs to be reduced, the level of foxes well, I, there. I think almost any research that's ever been done into this issue has concluded that the most effective thing any farmer can do is better animal husbandry to protect their animals against fox predation. Particularly in terms of chickens, it's about better fencing in, better methods of keeping your chickens safe. And when my own chickens have died, I'm sorry to say that that is the conclusion I've come to, that it was my own fault. I hadn't protected them well enough. When we talk about lamb predation, the number of lambs that died due to foxes, that's less than 5%. So 95% of lamb deaths are caused by something other than foxes. But, but, but Vanessa, that's against a background of severe fox control at the moment. That, that, that's basically saying that fox control, as it, does, is, as it happens at the moment, is working because so you're, you're seeing so is, less. So what is your point? My point is that what's happened is that for political reasons, for prejudice reasons, an activity which is selective, which no other method can be, and non-wounding, which no other method can be, has been this banned. This is absolute nonsense. It is not non-wounding. Uh, of course fox hunting and deer hunting and hare coursing were allowed by law, then the hounds would tear foxes to pieces, leading to the ceremony known as blooding, in which young children had foxes' blood wiped over them to show that they were adult enough to kill other creatures. Well, there's no Let's welfare issue there. That's, that's this when is, the animal's this dead. Is the this is not simply a planet for human beings. Of course the not. idea that the whole of the world should revolve about what's convenient to human beings is utterly repugnant. The, there are billions of other creatures on the face of this earth, and all of them have the same rights as human beings. The fact that we're stronger and that we've got more efficient and effective ways of slaughtering other creatures doesn't mean that we have the right to do it. There are arguments in favor, of course, of killing animals. There are arguments in favor of doing that for animal husbandry. And there are arguments in favor of doing that for food. But the idea that it's acceptable for people to put on these ridiculous outfits and go marauding around the country for pleasure, killing animals 
it, I just find utterly unacceptable. Oscar Wilde got it absolutely right when he described hunting as the unspeakable in pursuit of the uneatable. You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London, where we're discussing fox hunting. Sean Lovett, the, the, I mean, r- regardless of uh, what one might think of the clothes people on hunts wear, it, it is, uh, uh, he, Sir Gerald does make uh, an interesting point, which is that animal rights surely are becoming, they are approaching a similar status to the way we think of human rights. Uh, and uh, as a result, it's, it's simply not acceptable socially, really, to go around, you know, hounding animals who haven't really done anything wrong. They're not exactly being hounded by people. Do you honestly think that we... They're literally being hounded. Uh, they're not. Hounded. Have you ever been to a hunt? Have you ever been involved in one? And, and I've not been involved in a hunt. No, I've not been involved in a hunt, and I don't know, want to be involved in a hunt. So how I've do you exactly know... In, I've never taken part in a murder, <laughs> but that doesn't stop me being opposed to murder. I, I, I would like to ask a question to Vanessa Hudson here. You know, in, in the natural world, animals routinely rip each other to shreds. That's how nature works. We do think about cruelty and whether our acts are cruel, but we are also part of the natural world. You know, we can't ban other animals, for example. We can't ban a lion from ripping a zebra to shreds. We don't ban cats from catching mice. Why should we ban a few people from, you know, hunting a fox? Because well, we, we, we have banned it. We have with, banned with it already. With the right to control, with the ability to control what they do. Other, uh, other creatures are genetically programmed to do certain things. Human beings... Ex- uh, control what they do and they control them in many ways that's what we've got why we've got laws against all kinds of crimes we're a sophisticated mammal all right um uh, but yes Jim well, Barrington. Uh, uh, we don't seem to be talking much about animals here we talked we're talking about humans dressing up uh, the, the morality i i cannot see that there's anything moral about taking something out and leaving a worse situation. And that is exactly it's what the hunt... It's not a worse situation. Oh, absolutely. Situation. I'm sorry, Sir Gerald. I'm sorry, it is. Uh, there's been millions of pounds spent on the Hunting Act, £30 million to get this piece of nonsense onto the statute book. Well worth more, it. Millions of pounds more in from the public purse in prosecuting hunts and failed prosecutions and what have you. Not one penny has been spent on seeing what the effect is on, on animals. It's a fundamental misunderstanding of life in the wild to think that of, of animals in the wild as humans. That's a nonsense. They, ha- for various reasons, will have to be controlled because of their numbers, because of disease, things that do not affect domestic animals. We have to treat them differently. But I would argue very strongly that we should not cause them unnecessary suffering. And that is what your colleague, Lord Donoghue, a Labour peer, has put forward in the House of Lords. There should be a safety net under all these activities, hunting, shooting, gamekeeping, farming or whatever, to say that no one should be allowed to cause unnecessary suffering. And then it would be down to evidence rather than opinion as to how this law is formulated. But how would you define unnecessary suffering? The fact that something is done where there is a better alternative. If I can prove that you, just in the case of domestic animals, we can kill domestic animals, as as you know. Um, But if I think you've caused unnecessary suffering, that's the legal definition of cruelty. And the same principle should apply to wild mammals. So it's broader. It doesn't just cover the four hunted species that we have at the moment. uh, And it's certainly a case that it would be principle and evidence based rather than the fact that just because a certain number of MPs felt that this was uh, good class war material, that uh, we have a law based on that. No, we want a law based on principle, not on prejudice and ignorance. But Jim, the, 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 the Burns report... Class war material. Sir Gerald, mm. Sir, 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 Sir Gerald if I can just... Labour members of Parliament, Liberal Democrat members of Parliament have all voted in favour of this. It doesn't stop them being ignorant, does it? <laughs> you, can, you can have ignorance in all parties. that you believe the Conservative members of Parliament, as well as Labour and Liberal Democrats, voted for the ban because they were interested in class warfare. You're living oh, in a so very, Gerald, look very, at the very quotes. Look at the quotes that have come out since. 
I want to bring in Vanessa Hudson yeah. here, who who wants to say something. Well, actually, I wanted to pick Jim up on two points there. I mean, one of them was that he said the ban had been a, a, a waste of, of time, but let's look at the, the statistics. Seventy percent of those people, of those convictions, have been successful. So, uh, so that was incorrect. But also, you well, said can I you answer that, Vanessa, because seventy percent of those convictions are for acts acts that were basically poaching. There's been a handful of hunts involved. When you talk about the two hundred or so successful prosecutions, most the vast majority of those were for poaching offences which were already illegal. If the fact that it's simply under the Hunting Act does not justify the Hunting Act. You're well, no, if we're, you're saying it's, if we're saying it's been ineffective and it's been wasted six or time, seven. if we're saying it's been ineffective and it's wasted time, then surely the statistics are relevant and we're looking at 231 convictions, that's a 70% success rate. So, you so we're talking you about a 30% you failure think that, rate, which I wouldn't say is a waste of time. You think that the but money that, 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 that the own, RSPCA spent that's on that diff, prosecution, that's a, different issue. That's a, a third different of a issue. million pounds when they're, they're, they're prosecuting a, a crime, which the police themselves say is something that, 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 that is relevant to a, a fix, fixed penalty notice. It is that low down. The I, RSPCA, it was a disgrace what they did no, with, with I, their I members' No, I applaud money. the RSPCA. I think they did a wonderful job, and I think they signalled to all those people out there who think that they're in some way above the law that actually they're not. Absolute, Can I just say nonsense. you applaud them for spending that amount of money on a conviction that it could have gone to lots of other things. I absolutely wholeheartedly applaud the RSPCA. I think they did a great job, could, could I just and many of their supporters... Backing them and pledging even more money than before. Can, can I just yeah, say? Yeah, can I just? I agree. A, a notice went out to all MPs just this week from the RSPCA. One page is for live transport, which involves a lot of live animals. Uh, half a page is for pets. A full page is for hunting. Not one question, not one point about the sow stalls, which has been brought in or should have been brought in uh, to prevent sow stalls across the EU. About 14 countries are just ignoring that. Literally millions of animals suffering in horrendous conditions. But what do the RSPCA do? Concentrate on hunting. Absolute, total, out of proportion and nonsense. They should really rethink their policy. Sean Lovett, uh, you've hunted. Yeah. Uh, what is the atmosphere like within the hunt? Uh, what, what do people within the hunt feel and think? Are they confident? Do they believe the ban will be repealed? You know, how's it going for them? Of course we think it will be reappealed. The atmosphere when, when you're there is absolutely fantastic. It's second to none. We're not there thinking, right, we're going to go and kill someone. You know, we're not out there to dress up in something posh and shout tally-ho to everyone. We're there to meet with our friends, exercise our horses. We don't think we're killing something. We're not killing an animal. You know, we are all animal lovers, and I think that's what people are forgetting. You, you need to strip back every, everything that's said here and remember that shooting a fox or an animal is is not normal but a simple nip nip on the neck from another animal is natural it's what natural and it's a natural way to trap. i've rarely <laughs> heard such utter self-regarding rubbish in my life of course you'd like that because it uh, because uh, you enjoy it and but Lots of things have been taking place in this country, and what we have is a better society. Far, far, far from a perfect society, but a better society. And all kinds of people will complain about controls that are exercised for a better society. Sir Gerald, uh, uh, Sir Gerald do tell us about the mood in Parliament. You know, Cameron is committed to bringing back uh, fox hunting with hounds. Uh, so there is a division there within the political establishment, uh, but uh, so far no desire to actually hold a vote because no sense that it would be won. Uh, but what are people saying in the, in the corridors of Westminster about it? Look, this, we are a parliamentary democracy. We operate on the basis of laws passed by Parliament. This law was passed by Parliament. The reactionaries in the House of Lords who tried to stop it were overcome by the use of the Parliament Act. We had and have a majority against hunting with dogs in Parliament. And it's although not true, actually. Mr. Cameron, with his interesting um, countryside activities, <coughs> would like to change it. He knows that he can't. He, and I'll tell you this, he knows that he can't, not simply because Labour 
members of parliament are predominantly against hunting with dogs, but because there are enough conservative members of parliament as well as liberal democrats to stop a repeal going through. So, Gerald, End that is not story. That is not true. The, per, the people of who are stopping the people who are stopping this going I, through. What I've been doing the people who are stopping this facts. going through are the forty-one Scottish MPs. Who, guys, we can only have one person talking at the, the same time. The, the, the people who are stopping this going through are the forty-one Labour MPs who this issue has been devolved to the Scottish Parliament, yet they can still argue for something that goes on in England and Wales. So they are the ones that are preventing this going through and allowing well, people from... It's the West Lothian question, Sir Gerald. You should know about it. It's a dream world in which you invent a scenario to suit yourself. The fact is that the people of this country, as has been pointed out on the opinion poll, are overwhelmingly against bringing back this savage and nasty activity. They're for hanging as well, but you don't take that up, do you? You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London, where we're discussing fox hunting. With me in the studio are Sean Lovett, a pro-hunt dressage rider and journalist, Jim Barrington, who is a welfare consultant to the Countryside Alliance and a former executive director of the League Against Cruel Sports, and Vanessa Hudson, who is leader of the political party Animals Count. And on the phone we have Sir Gerald Kaufman, a Labour MP who opposes fox hunting. Vanessa Hudson, you said before that the situation that we have now is not ideal. How would you like to see it improved? Well, I think um, it would be great to actually conduct a, a study that once and for all addresses two key questions. The first one would be, do fox populations need controlling by human beings? Because there is a substantial amount of evidence that suggests that they're self-controlling. So the fox population numbers largely stay the same year after year. So the first thing we need to do to, is to establish, a fox is actually causing a problem. The second thing we need to do is look at every single piece of evidence we have on fox hunting and say... Well, is hunting with dogs effective? Did it ever do anything? And at the moment, research suggests that hunting with, with dogs is only ever responsible for 6.25% of all fox deaths. So as a method of fox population control, it was largely ineffective. Then we need to look at what, are, you know, if there is a problem with foxes, we need to look at what we can do as human beings to actually take preventative measures. And then, and only then, finally, lastly, if we say foxes are a problem, we can't do anything about this ourselves, then we look at more better methods of killing them, such as lamping. But we need to do research on that. What, what is lamping? Lamping is where you, you shine a, a flashlight at the fox and shoot it with a telescopic So you uh, would gun. rather shoot it inhumanely, leave it to die for hours? Well, no, and actually, actually, research so far, and this is research backed up by the Australian government, who also have a, a problem with foxes, killing um, natural species, they largely found that hunting with dogs is ineffective. They, they gave up on it almost. And Vanessa, they, you, you they are comparing have, apples with oranges here. If you let me finish you, my sentence. I'm sorry, but you are. Let's let Hudson finish her sentence and then you can come in. They have decided that the most effective and most humane method of killing foxes is lamping. Jim Barrington. That, that is the most ridiculous comparison. Australia is trying to wipe out the fox population. We are not. We're trying to keep it. Management is about not about the numbers you kill. It's about the health of those that you leave alive. That is what hunting does. It is a method of, ma of, of management. I it think, is not a method of control in that regard. a very specific issue no, of how you, to humanely kill a fox. And, and to, to guarantee that a fox will die within three, four seconds, which is what the kill actually takes, cannot be applied to any other method at all. The trouble is this is wrapped up with so much prejudice. What we have to do is go back to what Lord Donoghue, a Labour peer, has said. Let's go back to principle. Let's have a law that says, if I can prove that you've caused unnecessary suffering to a wild mammal in any circumstance, that should be acceptable to both pro and anti-hunt people. That is the way forward. That is the way this issue will be settled and taken off the political agenda. Well, uh, so are we, are we saying that the Burns report of 2000 was a nonsense? The Burns report looked at hunting with dogs and Lord against Burns said, hunting, Lord Burns shooting. said that he, his report does not say that hunting is cruel. Most specifically, Burns says, if you think that we're saying that hunting is cruel, the answer is no. He said that in the House of Lords. Well, no, well, actually... Because, he... because some person uh, has said something in the House of Lords doesn't make it 
a fact. The fact that this person is a member of the Labour Party doesn't mean that he's necessarily talking sense. He's clearly not talking sense. The fact that, that, to all that we have a law, it was passed by Parliament, it's in effect. The RSPCA, and all credit to it, uses the law to prosecute people who are breaking the law. The law is not going to be repealed. Sean Lovett, isn't it enough just to get on a horse, rampage through the countryside, but not at the end, you know, kill a fox? We're not there just to, you know, just to kill a fox. That's not exactly what hunting's about. And I think you're all forgetting this. You know, there is only a couple of foxes that are killed when you're out on a hunt. And let's be honest, they're the ones that can't run away or are injured. And would you rather leave them there injured and suffering? But isn't it, isn't it enough just to uh, pretend to hunt a, a fox? No, you, you completely you, you don't, don't understand. It's well, I think there are plenty of hunts that do take place up and down the country that, that the end is not killing a fox, and that's kind of what the ban is all about. So it should be enough, and there are plenty of people out there who say it is enough and that they are practising legally. So I think that question's already answered. So what do we do then? If we ride past a fox that, that's injured, uh, suffering, in pain, just leave it, leave it in pain? Well, no, quite clearly that fox will be shot. That's not a debate here, is it? Why is it that, that you, can sh- you can hunt um, a rat but not a mouse? Why is it that you can hunt a rabbit but not a hare? Why is it that you can, you can hunt a wounded hare but not a wounded fox? Where, where is the principle in, the, in that law? Why is it that you can use two hounds to flush out a fox? If you use three, you're breaking the law. Why is it that you have to shoot the fox once you've flushed it out? If you don't shoot it, you're breaking the law. So if you don't shoot a fox in this case, you're actually breaking the law. That's a strange animal welfare law, isn't it? What's your point, Jim? The point is, this is not about animal welfare. It's about creating technical offences. That's all it does. I don't think the examples you've given provide any kind of argument to suggest that the, the, the 2004 Hunting Act is not about animal welfare. Leaving aside the question of animal welfare, welfare for one second, I also want to ask about the value of traditional activities, and whether we agree that there is a value in, in maintaining traditions and, and whether it's important for the population to be able to do so. So, Gerald, do you have a view on that? It depends what the tradition is. There are all kinds of traditions that have gone on in this country for a long time or a shorter time. Folk dancing is charming and delightful and doesn't kill anybody at the end of it. So the fact that something is a tradition doesn't mean that it's sacred. Sean Lovett, do you believe it's an important tradition? Of course I do. I live in the countryside. It's tradition that we get up on Boxing Day. There's our local hunt going through our local village or town. It's just absolutely crazy. You're not looking at the facts. You're you're thinking that's that's cruel to an animal. Let let's get rid of it. You know what about shooting, fishing, anything like that? You're just not looking at the other options. Vanessa Hudson, what about fishing? I'm sorry, but I think we've gone slightly off tack. And that we were talking about tradition, and and yeah, it's regrettable for those people who hold this tradition dear and feel that the fact that they can't kill a fox at the end of it that, that somehow mars the whole tradition. Well, I have some personal sympathy for them, but if we take a step back and think about who we are as a society and the highest expression that we'd like to make about ourselves. And, yeah, I completely agree that just because something once happened for a period of time, that is by no means any kind of reason to carry it on. A That's a nonsense. Time, it, was, it was quite a long time, so I don't think you can just well, say... Well, the, the period of time is irrelevant. The fact is we as a society have decided that it's no longer an appropriate expression of who we are. End of All story. right, that is the end of this story as well because we've run out of time. I'm going to thank my guests who are Sean Lovett, a pro hunt dressage rider and journalist, Jim Barrington, who is a welfare consultant to the Countryside Alliance and a former executive director of the League Against Cruel Sports, and Vanessa Hudson, who is leader of the political party Animals Count, and on the phone, Sir Gerald Kaufman, a Labour MP and fox hunting opponent. Thank you all very much.